you breathe in, my presence surrounds you. I am here, the creator of humanity. Are you listening for me? I know that you long for my presence, for my heart is to be present with you. I watch as the morning light announces a new day. In the breeze brushing past your face, I am with you every step of the way. In the struggle and the challenge, I am with you. I will walk with you through fire. I calm the raging seas. My spirit will never leave you. Come find me. Search me out. Sit in my word and soak in my presence. Practice walking in my footprints. Dance in my court. Bring shouts of thanksgiving. See creation in vivid color as you discover me, the creator. My voice is speaking. My presence is here. No matter your circumstances, I am with you always. All right, so the last week of our present series, but before we get into that, what did people say? Things that they can't, that they have to have with them everywhere. Watch, phone, hat, keys, hat. You don't have one on right now, though. Where is it? Oh, okay, okay. It's just not on. Okay, respect. Any other? Any others? Anyone? Glasses? Do people need to like wear glasses or contacts everywhere? Yeah, a couple of people. Nice. Cool. Okay. Well, for me, the one thing that I always want to make sure I have on me at all times, except when I'm preaching, and even then, it's down in the front row is my keys, my keys. Now, part of this is because for me, I have locked myself out of my house many times. And so for me, not having my keys on me makes me feel anxious that I'm about to do the exact same thing again. You know, I've had to, back in the day when uh, I was back home with my parents, have to like, you know, climb up the outside of our house to like get myself up into a bathroom window that was slightly ajar and like get my head in unwind it further and then slide in down the wall upside down to just get in the house. I've had to do all of those sort of different things. But now I live in a house which is actually an apartment and we live on the fifth story and uh, we only have one door. And so like if you lock yourself out, you can't get in any other way. You can't climb up other people's balconies or you can't climb up on their verandas and then just, you know, jimmy yourself all the way up. You just can't do that. So. Having my keys on me is something really important. But the worst time that this happened was when I was, I was like, tw- I was 19 years old. My brothers were still at school and um, I'd one day just gone into the city to catch up with some friends. Now, I didn't take the car with me because mum needed it later in the day. And I was like, all right, whatever. But I'm just going to catch the bus into the city. Uh, and, and by city, I mean country town Ballarat. So like, we had like 20 shops. But I went into the city and I was hanging out with some mates and we caught up, we had lunch, we did all that sort of stuff. But I went home a little bit earlier than I thought because the other boys uh, were doing some stuff. So anyway, I catch the bus home and I get home about one o'clock and mum's left. And because mum was home when I left, I just left my keys at home because I was like, oh, mum will be home when I get back. That's fine, no stress. But mum had left because she got called into work. But when she left... She locked all the doors, which was the worst. So anyway, I'm like, all right, I gotta find out what mum's doing. So I call mum, I'm like, mum, what are you you doing, where are you at? She said, oh, I'm just working, I'll be home at like six o'clock. I was like, "Mm, that doesn't work for me, I'm at at home now, it's one o'clock, I don't wanna sit outside for five hours, because all the fun things are inside the house. All I've got outside is some trees and some grass, like that's it. So I was like, that's not gonna work. So I called dad, my dad's a pastor. I was like, dad, are you gonna come home anytime soon? He said, no son, sorry, I'm working through until nine because I've got an elders meeting. tonight." I was like, oh, the worst, that's definitely not gonna work for me. And so I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've got like three hours until my brothers get home. And so I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna head to their school. Oh, nice. And I'm uh, going to ask them to come and give me their, one of their keys so then I can take that home, get in, and then just like chill at home while I wait for them to get home. So anyway, so I'm like, that, that idea will work. So I quickly run down to the bus stop. I catch the bus into my brother's school, which thankfully wasn't far away because obviously I couldn't take a car. Mum had it, and even if she had left it, my keys were inside the house. So I get back on the bus, and uh, I get to their school, and I'm like, 
go into reception like, hey guys, uh, I just need you to call uh, my brothers over. I need one of their keys to get into my house. I'm locked out. They're like, okay, that's no worries at all. And so they're like, okay, let's, um, let's call them over. And so the lady gets on the microphone and she's calling my brothers and she's like, Sam and John Dayton, please come to the administration office. Sam and John Dayton to the administration office. Is that how you guys like get your announcements done at your school? Like it kind of sounds like that? No? What do you get? Like just a text message? Just like, hey. Email. Email. Ugh, gross. Actually an email to say come to the office. Oh, okay. I've never got a detention. No, I got detention. I, I cut a kid's hair one time when I, he didn't ask me to. Um, yeah, no, nasty. Anyway, not my confession time. But anyway, she calls him over the speaker. I'm sitting there in the admin office for like five minutes. Nothing. They don't come. Anyway, she calls him again, you know, Sam and John Dayton, please come to the administration office. Sam and John Dayton to the administration office. We sit there and wait another five minutes, still nothing. So she gets up a third time. She's like, Sam and John Dayton to the administration office. Sam and John Dayton, please, to the administration office. Anyway, eventually one of them arrives. I'm pretty sure it was my brother Sam. He's the middle child. And I... Uh, we were like, I said to him, dude, like, what took you so long? Did you hear your name being called? And he said, yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's my name being called, but I don't know why they'd call me, so I didn't go. And I said, dude, that's the exact reason why you should go. You know, like, when you don't know why they're calling you to the office, that's why you go. It's mum calling or dad calling or your brother just needs some keys to get home. But anyway, he's not the smartest one in our family. In fact, I'm the smartest one, so it wouldn't have mattered which brother it was. Obviously, the youngest brother didn't even rock up at all, so I don't know what his excuse was. Um, maybe he's deaf. But, no, he listens to heavy metal. He used to be a screamer in a band. It's a joke about that. Anyway, sorry, inappropriate. But he, um, he came and gave me the keys. Eventually, I got home. I got in. But ever since then, I've always been super stressed about having my keys. And for me, it's just those little moments where sometimes my keys are normally in my front right pocket. But when I go to close the door at home and I hear it lock and then I quickly check my pocket and it's like my keys aren't there. And you have that like, oh my gosh, I've just locked myself out of the house for them only to be in like your back left pocket. And you're like, why did I put them there? Why? I've just given myself a minor heart attack for no apparent reason. But whatever it is, we all have things that we like to keep on us. Some of us, because we have to, you might need to have your glasses to actually be able to see what's going on around you. Some of you, you might have something else. Maybe you have like a security blanket that you just like to hold and like stroke while you're at school. That's okay if you do, no judgment. Like, go for it. Maybe for some of you, it's your hat or it's uh, your phone or it's just something else. But there's something for you that you feel like you need to have both because it helps you get through the day and because it brings you a sense of peace and calm about the fact that you have what you need. But whatever it is, we like to have these things with us. And this morning, as we finish our present series, I want us to look finally about how we can have God's presence with us always. So throughout the last few weeks, we've talked about things about how God's presence is found in community, about how we can experience God's presence through praise, all of these different ways that we can know and experience God's presence. But as we finish, I want us to remember and to know this, that God's presence is always with us. God's presence is always with us because Jesus has always wanted to be with us. So no matter what situation or circumstance you're dealing with, Jesus has always wanted to be with you. I know this sounds crazy, but when it comes to maths and it's three o'clock on a Monday afternoon and you're sitting there going, what the heck is this? I have no idea and no desire to do this. Jesus is still there with you. And it's kind of like a weird little image, but Jesus is always with you. In the best moments, when you're winning some trophy or you just won some award, or maybe in those moments where you're just, you know, chilling in your room, a little bit sad, a little bit overwhelmed by life, Jesus is present with you in the highs, he's present with you in the lows, he's present with you when you know it and when you don't know it. Jesus is always present with you. And so today I just want to look at a couple of quick passages that help us see that Jesus has always been with us and why it's so important to us. So we're looking at John chapter 14 verse 16. This is the first time Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says this, he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. For how long? Forever. forever. Now, how long does forever go till? Forever. Forever, correct. It just is always going on. So that's the first thing that Jesus says. He wants to give us someone to be with us forever. 
But then we see in Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, that it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What does he say? He says, surely I am with you always. See, Jesus has given us his presence. Jesus gives us his presence. And see, we can know that presence everywhere. See, Jesus is saying, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, you're going to do all these things all around the world. Tell people about me and my presence will be with you. I will be with you. My Holy Spirit will be at work in you always and forever. He's not just saying, my spirit will be with you when you're sitting here this morning at YC. My spirit will be with you when you're praying or when you're in your Bible. He's not saying that. He's saying, my spirit will always be with you whether you know it or not. Now, one weird thing that's happened to me since I've been married, and there's been many weird things, is this. I've started to sing songs about my wife. I just will just spontaneously make up a song and start singing it about her. And the weirdest part is it normally happens when she's not around. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll just be driving home from work, and I'm so excited to see her when I get home that I will just start spontaneously singing a song. Do you guys want to hear one? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Now, obviously I can't remember them because I make them up spontaneously, but it'll be something a little bit like this. It'll be like, I'm going to see my wife. I'm going to see my wife. I'm going to see my wife. She's my favorite thing in life. Boop, boop. Like, and I'll just like repeat that. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I have two albums on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. You can find them on there for children's separation. Shout out. But, um... It's this weird thing. I've never done it before in my entire life. I obviously don't sing songs about my friends. Like, I'm not singing a song about Max. Like, you know, I mean, not much rhymes with Max anyway. So, except Axe. Except Axe. Max the Axe. Ugh. Lame. (laughs) Anyway, sorry, Max. But, like, you know, I don't sing songs about Max. I don't sing songs about Ben Islin. I do sing songs about Samuel, though, because he saves my life all the time at youth. But, you know, that's special privileges for Samuel. Uh, He's the man. But I just only really sing songs about my wife. It's crazy. I don't know what happens. But this is the weirdest thing. I'll be sitting in the car by myself driving home. But when I sing songs about my wife, it's like she's there with me. Because I remind myself about all the things I love about her, all the great things about who she is, how kind she is, how loving she is, how funny she is, all of these incredible things. And while she's not there with me, it's like she is. And see, this is, this is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is that even when it feels like God isn't there with you, He is. He is. And it doesn't matter the situations or the circumstances. It it genuinely doesn't matter where you find yourself. You could be at school. You could be at home. You could be in the bathroom. You could be anywhere, and God is there with you. See, God has given us his presence. Not that we can find in certain moments and in certain locations, but in any place at any time. That is the gift that God wants to give you. See, he has given you his presence for anywhere at any time. But he doesn't just give us his presence, but he helps us understand something really important. See, often we look to all of these different things that we take with us in different places, you know, whether it's glasses, whether it's phones, whether it's keys, whether it's watches, whatever it is, these things that we take with us, they help fulfill some need. Maybe, like I said before, a sense of peace, a sense of calm, maybe just a functionality, like I can actually do life because I have this with me. But see, Jesus doesn't just give us his presence for just a nice, like, oh, God is always with me. But he gives us his presence because his presence gives us all we need. See, Jesus gives us his presence because his presence gives us all we need. And in John 14, 25 to 27, it says this. It says, all of this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, which he talked about earlier, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So Jesus is saying, look, my Holy Spirit is going to give you all the practical advice and help that you need to follow my plans and my purposes for your life. 
And then he says, but not only am I going to give you everything that you need to get around life, to navigate it, to make the right decisions, to do good things for other people, to be his witness in the world. But he says this, I'm also going to give you peace. Because he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. See, Jesus wants to give you peace and comfort and hope and purpose and love and joy and all of these things, the wisdom to navigate life, the joy and the hope and the peace that you're looking for are all found in his presence. They're all found in his presence. See, Jesus gives us his presence and his presence gives us all that we need. And so for each and every single one of you, God's presence is something that is available to you at any moment, at any time, in any situation, no matter what you're feeling. And the truth is that his presence is what you should be seeking because in it is everything that you need. Now, what I'm not saying is this. I'm not saying you need to find God's presence. So you need to be people who just listen to worship music all all time. You know, like every single day, just listen to worship music over and over again. I'm also not saying if you're not like doing something, you should be reading the Bible or you should be praying. I'm not saying there's a list of more things for us to do so that we can know God's presence. What I am saying is that God's presence is always with you. Just continue to be aware of it. See, I don't know if you've ever had that moment where um, you're talking to someone and they're on their phone, you know, and, and you're talking to them and you're trying to talk about something and they're just kind of like, oh yeah, oh man, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Oh man, how exciting, that's so cool. And you're like, you're not even paying any attention to me at all. And in fact, I just told you that my dog died. How is that so exciting? You know, like you're really not paying any attention. And for us, when it comes to God's presence, that is what it's about. It's not about trying to do more, it's just about trying to be more aware. And one of the best examples of this is this guy named Brother Lawrence. Now, Brother Lawrence is this old monk from like way back. But he was a guy who is famous for this book that is called Practicing the Presence of God. And it's because Brother Lawrence's whole idea was that he wanted to know God's presence in every moment of every day. That was what he was doing. That was what he was trying to achieve. And Brother Lawrence has this incredible quote about knowing the presence of God in our lives. And he says this. This is his reflection on his life. He says, The time of busyness does not differ with me from the time of prayer. So what he's saying here, just in this first sentence, is that even when he's busy, his awareness of God's presence doesn't feel any different than to when he's praying. How incredible is that? that when he's busy doing stuff, it doesn't feel any different to when he is praying. But then he goes on. He says, In the noise and the clatter of my kitchen, while several different people are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in as great a tranquility as if I were on my knees. He's saying there can be noise, there can be people calling out for all of these things, but even in the midst of that, I know God's presence as if I was in my, on my knees in prayer to him. Isn't that incredible? Imagine being able to know and experience the presence of God in the midst of the hustle and bustle of every single day life. And this is what the brother, brother Lawrence was doing. And if you read his story and you're trying to understand it, he wasn't someone who just said, if I'm in the kitchen, I'm kind of like washing the dishes with one hand and I'm reading my Bible in the other. But no, he's like, I chose to be aware of God's presence, which is always with me at every moment, in every time, in every place, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what I'm doing, his presence is with me and I will choose to be aware of it. And this is the challenge for us because if we're going to be people of God's presence, people who know the presence of God and are his presence in the world, then we need to choose to be people who try and be more aware of his presence. And all it takes is just a subtle little thing to go, God, you know, I'm in the middle of maths right now, I'm in the middle of science, or I'm in the middle of English, or I'm on the bus on the way to school, or I'm about to step onto the sporting field. Help me to be aware of your presence right now. Because you're here. Because you're with me. 
because you're being good, because you're being faithful. And the great thing is we don't just try and do this in our own strength, but as we see, Jesus says he's going to give us his Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth and to remember everything that he said. And one of the things that he said is that I am with you always. I will be with you forever. And his presence is always with us. I'm going to invite Max up, and Max is just going to play some guitar for us as we uh, come into land. But this is my encouragement and challenge to each and every single one of you. Will you be people who choose to seek after God's presence? See, God's presence is here with us now in this moment. And it's easy for us to see that sometimes because we go, you know what? I'm at church. If God's going to be anywhere, he's going to be at church. But the truth is that God is with you at home. God is with you at school. God is with you on the sporting fields. His presence is always available to us. And if we choose to be people who just wait until we get together on a Sunday to experience God's presence, we miss out on every other minute and every other hour for the rest of the week. See, each week there's 168 hours. We're about to spend one of them here in God's presence. And if this is the only hour out of 168 hours that you're in God's presence, you're missing out on 167 hours where God is just as present with you as he is right here, right now. And I don't know about you, but when you fully understand how good and how great our God is, why would I ever want to spend an hour not in his presence? Why would I ever want to miss out on an opportunity to be present with him? And so what I want to do to finish is I just want us to spend a moment just reflecting and I want to pray over you guys that you would be people who would be aware of his presence. That you'd be people who would desire to take his presence with you everywhere. So that he could give you everything that you need to navigate life. Wisdom, direction, purpose, peace, hope, joy, because it's all in his presence. Because he gave us his presence and his presence gives us all that we need. So we just close your eyes and bow your head. And what I want you to do as you do this is just go, God, is there something I can do to help me be more aware of your presence? It's all we're asking him. God, is there something I can do to be more aware of your presence? And then I'm just going to pray over you guys so that we can be people who are increasingly aware of who God is and what he's doing in our lives. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the fact that we can be people who can experience your presence anywhere at any time, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we're thinking, no matter what we're feeling. Because God, you aren't just waiting for us here on a Sunday morning, but you are with us always and forever. And God, I thank you that you so desired to give us your presence so that you could be with us, but also so that you could give us all that we need. So God, I pray for each person in this room right now, Lord God, I pray that you would give them a great desire for your presence. God, I pray that you'd give them an increasing awareness of your presence. God, I pray that they would recognize that you are with them at school, at home, on the sporting field, Lord, when they're at their part-time job, Lord, when they're studying, Lord, when they're preparing to go to sleep, when they're just first waking up, Lord, that there isn't a moment that you aren't there with them, that they can be aware of your presence. And God, I pray that as we become people who are increasingly aware of your presence, God, I pray that we would go and take your presence into the world around us, into our schools, into our homes, into our study, into our part-time jobs. Lord, that we would be people who would know your presence and take your presence to others. And so, Lord, we thank you for just how good you are and how faithful you've been to us. We thank you that your presence is always available to us. And God, I just pray that you would continue to speak to us. Lead us, change us, help us be your people. And we just pray all of this in your name. Amen.